Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. They that hunger and thirst is the title of this devotion. Of course, I assume you would have heard Jesus say this in Matthew 5, when he says in verse 6, Blessed, fortunate, and happy, and spiritually prosperous in a state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, the King James would say. That word filled means satisfied. I find for me, as I've grown in my relationship over the years, and I, I, I can see how much more I need to grow, but what I begin to see is that, for example, the rest of God has become an armor for me to keep me when it comes to becoming anxious in my natural nature, in whatever way, needy, wanting, that rest guards me, keeps me. No, he keeps me in perfect peace. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. And then I think about his holiness is for me an armor against what's unholy and unclean. It, it shields it from me. It, it repels it from me. I can't endure it. I can't bear it. I, I, feel, uh, I feel it, everything inside of me pushing it away that, you know, and that's the holiness of God. Now, of course, there's none holy but the Lord. So it's only through our union with him that we get to enjoy the holiness of God. But another one of the armors that I would like to talk to you about today is satisfaction. You see, when we're wanting and needy and unfulfilled, then that makes us vulnerable to temptation. It makes us vulnerable to complaining, which makes other people feel like failures. When you complain, you're making other people feel like a failure. And complaining is not just a trivial thing. It's one of the five sins that God brought judgment on in the wilderness. You read about the five sins in the book of um, Corinthians that were committed in the wilderness, tempting Christ, lusting, complaining. I can't believe the other, I can't remember the other ones, but so complaining is, is something that, that comes out of an unsatisfied heart, that comes out of an incomplete heart, a heart that isn't content innermost being that's not content, not happy, not whole, not complete, not safe. It doesn't feel, oh, oh I feel so happy, so grateful, so thankful. It doesn't have that feeling, you see. So I want to talk to you about today, about hungering and thirsting. You see, when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, Jesus said, you shall be satisfied. When inwardly you long, in other words, to live in harmony with God, to live in right standing with Him. Yes, folks, all of us struggle sometimes in that area because of our weak human nature, because of the spirit of this world, because of the entertainment that distracts our hearts and pollutes it often with images and sounds and feelings and thoughts and impressions that pollute our heart. And then we don't feel right with God. And then again, we feel that gnawing wanting of the human nature. And that see human nature without God's indwelling fullness and presence feels unsatisfied. But when you walk in that holy righteousness with him, completeness and fullness with him, then you feel satisfied. That's what Jesus is saying. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled, shall be satisfied, complete, lacking nothing. And Isaiah, the prophet in chapter 55 of Isaiah, he said, and now let me read it to you from the classic Amplified. He says to you and me, why do you invest yourself 
Why do you give yourself completely for that which cannot satisfy? Here in Isaiah 55 verse 1. Wait and listen, everyone who's thirsty, come to the waters. And he who has no money, buy and eat. Come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price. Simply, listen closely, for the self-surrender that accepts God's blessing. Come and receive it freely, simply as a reward for your surrendering yourself to accept His blessings. Why, verse 2, do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your earnings for what does not satisfy. Hearken diligently to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness, the profuseness of spiritual joy. Wow. Jeremiah, he said in Jeremiah 15 verse 16, Lord, your word was found and I did eat it and it became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Oh, I love that way he says that. It's right here, we're so near to it. I should just read it because I feel I'm missing a little statement that's part of it. Uh, chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found and I ate them and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. That's the part I, I, I knew I'm missing the part. For I'm called by your name. I bear the image of you. I represent you and what I am. And I find your living word. And oh my goodness, it connects with my spirit. It feeds me. It makes my hungry soul satisfied, Lord. And you see, that's what the Lord is saying to you and me. Do you feel unsatisfied? <clears throat> Do you feel incomplete? Do you feel lacking? Do you feel wanting? Are you thirsting at all? Are you hungry at all? Maybe you're hungry or thirsty in your emotions. Maybe you're hungry and thirsty in your affections, in your desires. Maybe you feel lonely or abandoned or forsaken and it's gnawing away at you with such pain you don't know what to do with it. Come to me, says the Lord. Come, come. I will give it to you just on the very basis that you come and that you're willing to receive it from me. I will feed you with the life of my presence and my love and I will calm the storm of your emotions. I'll calm the storm of your affections, your desires. I will still your inward being. I will calm all these raging feelings of pain, of loss, of abandonment, of forsakenness, of loneliness, of want, of need. You know, people can live in a marriage where they lay in the same bed and still their hearts are so hurting because there's no affection there. There's no love there. <clears throat> it's just a cohabitation. And I know you can complain against it and make the other person feel guilty. And that does not bring about what you're looking for. It makes it worse. It pushes it away even more. And if you just come to God and say, Lord, you are the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In you I am complete, in you I'm satisfied. You give me all that I need. You know what I have need of before I even ask you. Father, I trust you. I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and I trust all these things to you. Folks, it's amazing when you put God in command of your needs, of your desires and affections, how he will satisfy the deepest thirst and the most longing hungers for love and affection and wholeness and completeness. David, in his amazing psalm, and I love this psalm, it's one of my life psalms, I read it often, <coughs> and it helps me. He says, O oh God, Psalm 63, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you, my inner self thirst for you. My flesh longs and faints for you. You see, that's what I'm really talking about. 
that's what Jesus meant when he said, they that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be satisfied. Righteousness means what? Coming into that rightness with God. Get, you know, folks, make yourself right with God and God will make right what you long for and desire for and want to need. That is the rule of life. That is the rule for each and every one of us in each and every area of our lives. And David says, Lord, <coughs> excuse me, oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you and faints for you. Yes, Lord, in this world, it's like being in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. There's nothing in this world, Father, that can satisfy me. And I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better to me than life. My lips will praise you, so I will bless you while I live and I will lift up my hands in your name. Here comes my whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. My mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Marrow and fatness, it's so simple. Meat that has no fat in it doesn't have much flavor. But when it has fat in it and you, you, you fry it in a pan or roast it on, 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 on a grill, the fat is what begins to melt and help flavor that meat and make it amazing. Marrow, it's what, make, it's what we make bouillon out of, you know, it's, it's what you use to really make that rich flavor out of. And what he's saying, the satisfaction you give is what flavors everything for me. It's what makes everything happy. Friends, there are people that get all the affection that any human being could ever think of, and yet they're not satisfied. There are people that have all the money, <clears throat> and they're not satisfied. There are people that can buy more than most anybody else, and they're not satisfied. The people that have children and still complain, the people that have a husband who loves them or a wife who loves them but still complain because they don't have that satisfaction that comes from the Lord. That's why I say to you today, if you hunger and thirst, you shall be satisfied. But you gotta know where to take that hunger and thirst. Take it to the Lord. The Bible says a good man shall be satisfied from above in Proverbs 14, verse 14. And David, writes one of these phenomenal psalms, Psalm 4. Oh, I love that psalm. That psalm has helped me so enormously. And he says in verse 6, Many say, Oh, that God, that we might see some good. Again, verse 6 of Psalm 4. Many say, Oh, that we might see some good. And then he says, Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy and rejoicing in my heart than they know when their wheat and new wine have yielded abundantly. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you, Lord, alone make me dwell in safety and confident trust. He says, Lord, they keep saying, oh, I wish something good would happen. I wish something would turn and I, I, you know, but me, your face is shining on me and I have more happy joy than they have when they finally get what they're hoping for, when they finally get their harvest, when they finally get their riches. I have more joy than they do in you, Lord. And you see, this is what the Lord says. You know the Psalm, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, all my soul, <clears throat> my whole living being. Bless his holy name and all that is within me. 
forget not his benefits, who forgiveth all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, and who satisfies my soul with good things so that my youth is renewed. It says, so he may satisfy your mouth. So he is using that same language. You feed upon the Lord's mercy and grace and blessing and your youth, your strength, your joy for living is restored to you. I really believe, my dear friends, as you take your hunger and thirst to the Lord, He Himself will satisfy you. Last but not least, last but not least, you know, you could look at your life. It's like I'm 62. Now I'll be 63 in October of 2023 this year. And I could look at my life. I, I mean, I don't feel old, honestly, I don't at all. I notice in some ways that I've gotten older, but I don't feel it at all. I feel renewed in my youth. I feel happy. I feel grateful. Oh, am I challenged? Seriously, in many ways. Have we gone through sorrows over the last many months? In many ways. But friends, honestly listen to me. I look at my life. I look at Virginia. She's been so ill, but now she's so much better. I look in her eyes and they don't look sick anymore. She's getting up, she's gone to the office. She came to church recently, first time in three months because she'd been in bed for almost three months, so terribly ill. And I look at her, <laughs> I just wanna sit down and cry with gratitude because I see the fruit of all the precious people, so many like yourself who've prayed for her and myself who've prayed and believed and nursed her day and night. And now I see her so much better. I look at my children and grand, our, our children and our grandchildren. Oh my goodness, friends. I look at the church here. I look at all the precious people I know around the world who serve the Lord, to people I meet in the stores who do their daily work. I, I walk in the hospital to visit somebody and see these people who do 12 hour shifts and, and that's if they do no overtime. And I look at all the things in this life and I feel so satisfied in gratitude. You see, sometimes folks, all we can be distracted by is maybe things we don't have yet or things we're challenged with. And what we need, especially when we're challenged, is to look at the good things and say, Father, how great thou art. When Abraham was challenged with the inward deep pain as a 75 year old man, that he still didn't have any children, that his wife Sarah was barren and that yes, God had blessed him and prospered him, but he had no children to share that blessing with and prosperity with. And in those days, maybe different than today for so many of us, that was the greatest pain you could have because the greatest honor was to be able to give to your children and to your children's children. And then the Lord said to Abram, Abram, I am your shield. Don't be afraid. I am your great reward. And Abram said, but Lord, what are you going to give me when I have no children? And the Lord said, look at the stars, look at the sand, but the seashore, if you're able to number them, so shall your children be. And Abram believed God. So God helped him to look beyond the moment of trial, the moment of testing, the moment of wanting and needing, and to look to God and to say, Lord, I believe, I believe. And friends, God would have you look I'm sure that Abram at night would walk outside with Sarah around his arm and he would say, honey, look up at the stars. Look how many. We can't number them, can we? And the Lord has said, so shall our children be. Oh, honey, let's, let's just rejoice in what God is bringing into, into our life. And even though when they would look at their natural, there was nothing there, but they looked at the promise 
Abraham might have carried some sand in his pocket and every time he felt a bit weary in waiting and trusting, he would feel the sand and look at the sand and he would go, no, I know what I believe. I know God has said, so shall my seed be. And you see, God wants you to not be so pulled down by what isn't and by what you need and what you desire, but he wants you to be lifted up far above it and speak into those desires and speak into those wants and needs and speak into those challenges of life and say, I know that God is great and he meets all my needs. So let me close with this beautiful scripture that I love deeply. It's Isaiah 53, verse 11. He, talking about Jesus, shall, be, shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his, knowledge, my, uh, by, by his knowledge of himself, which he possesses and imparts to others, shall my uncompromisingly righteous one, my servant, justify many and make many righteous upright and in right standing with God, for he shall bear their iniquities with the guilt and with the consequences, says the Lord. In other words, Jesus is sitting on his throne and he considers the great price he's paid on Calvary for your and my salvation and it satisfies him to know what he can empower you and me with to live to the glory of God. French, God wants you to be able to look at your life like Jesus looks at the prices he paid. He looks at what he's gone through in life with satisfaction that God himself will honor it and bring favor and blessings to all who call upon his name. Now believe God today, this is your turning point. This is the time you're stepping out of that wanting and waiting into the fulfillment of all that God has for you and me in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day.